Good morning. Praise the Lord. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Father God, we come to you today in the name of Jesus. We're so thankful and honored, Lord. We will come in fellowship, your presence, hear your word. We thank you, Lord, for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who saved us, who delivered us, who redeemed us, who gave us everlasting, eternal, abundant life. And Lord, pray for our nation. You said in your word, I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, giving of thanks, be made for all men, for kings, and for all in authority, that we may lead a quiet, peaceful life, all God and honesty. So we pray for our nation, our leaders, Lord, each one of them, hearken unto you. We speak peace to our country, we and declare we have a mighty revival of the Lord Jesus Christ. That every day more people receive in Jesus the United States of America. And Lord, we're a prosperous land, a blessed land. And Lord, we pray for all the nation of the world, that every nation has a gospel preached as a witness. Then that nations open up their borders to preach your gospel, Jesus Christ. That labors are being sent forth. Jesus said, the harvest is plenty, the labors are few. Pray ye therefore, Lord, harvest. He was sent forth, labors harvest. So we thank you, Lord, for all those missionaries, that, missionaries out there preaching Jesus Christ, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for protecting them and anointing them and meeting every one of their needs in abundance in Jesus' name. And we pray for all the body of Christ, each and every believer, become baptized in the Holy Spirit and being taught about who they are in Christ and going forth in this life, ruling and reigning in Jesus' name. And Lord, I, I thank you, Lord, for anointing me today. That people say and do what you have me say and do. Thank you, Lord, for giving me out of the Holy Ghost. Now pray for all those Lord, as we hear your word. And hear from the Holy Ghost, we'll go forth and become doers your word, love the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, if you have your Bibles, let's open our Bibles over here to the Gospel of Mark. And we'll go to Mark chapter 11. This is when Jesus has spoken to the fig tree and withered away and died. And the scripture says here in verse 22, And Jesus answered him, Have faith in God. And then Jesus wanted to say, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever say in this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast in the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have for saith. Now here Jesus has spoken this fig tree. In fact, we back up, let's read this verse 12. In the morn when they were come from Bethany, he, Jesus, hungry. And seeing the fig tree far off, having leaves, he came, if happily he might find it thereon. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of the figs not yet. And Jesus answered and said, no, no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And the disciples heard it. Now verse 20. In the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree at right roots. And Peter called and remembered and said, Master, behold, the fig tree thou curses with away. And this one Jesus said here, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever say in this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast in the sea, and shall not doubt in the heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall but say it. Now, here in Mark 4, we have another incident here of using our authority in words, or Jesus did. In Mark 4, now Jesus here taught the sower sows the word. And so the scripture says here, verse 35, when he finished, the same day when he was come, he saith them, let us pass over another side. And when they sent away the multitude, they took him as he was in his ship. And there were, other, uh, there were also with him other little ships. And there was a great storm of wind. The waves beat, so it was now... Uh, beating the ship so it's now full. And Jesus was in the hind part, hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and said, Master, carest thou not to perish? And he rose and rebuked the wind and said, Peace, peace be still, and the wind ceased and is a great calm. And he said to them, Why are you so fearful, and how do you have no faith? Now here's Jesus, as they woke him up in the midst of the storm, what the first thing Jesus did is he took authority over this. And then reprimanded his disciples because they didn't do this. See, God's given mankind dominion over this earth. Ever since Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 through verse 28, that we have dominion over this earth. And the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, that the earth is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. This is what we need to do as believers, is always exercise our authority when it can have problem. Our first line of defense is always speak to it, say something to it, just like Jesus did. He showed us here how powerful words are. It, it destroyed this tree, killed this tree. See, death and life are in the power of the tongue. The Bible says in Proverbs 21, verse 18. So we need to watch what I say. In fact, Jesus taught us that a man's justified and condemned by the words of his mouth. I mean, people, you know, they kind of poo-poo or think it's preposterous that you have what you say. But actually, we got born again that way. If we got born again, by confessing Jesus Christ the Lord. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and verse 10, that if thou shalt confess thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in the heart God is raised dead, thou shalt be saved. For at the heart, men believe righteous, with the mouth, confession made salvation. Verse 13 says, Who, Whosoever called the name of the Lord shall be saved. And Jesus taught us in Matthew chapter 10, verse 32 and 33, that if we'll confess him before men, he'll confess us before our Father. And we're told in Hebrews to hold fast our profession of faith. Now we begin to see all through the scriptures, 
that we do have what we say. And as believers, we need to monitor our mouth. Now, one, what's going to help us is get God's Word inside of us. By beginning to meditate on the Word, hear God's Word taught, read the Bible, reading promises from God's Word, meditating on God's Word. Because Jesus taught us, out of the abundance heart, the mouth will speak. So what we put inside our heart, this is what's going to come out of our mouth. And it's good this way, because we can fill our life up, our heart, with God's promises. So and when anything comes up, our first line of defense, we take authority over Jesus. Say something. You know, you see something, say something. You hear something, say something. You smell something, say something. You feel something, say something. Always using our authority first. Say, no, I refuse that in Jesus. Maybe some pain or fear or anxiety or depression, oppression would try to come upon the believer. Look at these things coming to everybody. Well, instead of wondering, I wonder what that is. I wonder why I feel that way. I wonder what's going on. No, begin to say, no, I refuse this. See, the Bible says in James 4, verse 7, Smit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. How do we resist the devil? Well, notice what Jesus did here. You're in Mark. Go back here to Matthew, in Matthew chapter 4. Now, the Scripture says here, uh, let's start up in chapter 3. The Scripture says in verse 13 of chapter 3 of Matthew, Then come at Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized in. But John forbid him, saying, I need to be baptized thee, not comest to me. And Jesus answered said to him, Serpent be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven, saying, This is my beloved Son, beloved son who I am well pleased. Now chapter 4. Then was Jesus left in the spirit and the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he afterwards hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones be made bread. And Jesus answered and said, It is written, Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word she is out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taken him into a holy city and set him a pinnacle temple. And said, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For he, should, for he should, he should give his angels charge concerning thee. In their hands they should bear thee up, lest thou dash with a stone. And Jesus said it unto him, It is written, Again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, the devil taken him and exceeding them high mountain, and showed him all the kings of the world the glory of them, and said, All these things I'll give, thou fall down and worship me. And Jesus said, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thy serve. Then the devil leaving him, behold, the angels came and ministered unto him. Now we see this here, what happened with Jesus. Here God has spoken audibly when Jesus got water baptized, that this is my beloved son, who I'm well pleased. And then Jesus goes, it was led by the Spirit of God, out there in the wilderness. Why is he out there? Satan shows up. And what Satan did is he brought these temptations to Jesus. Now, Satan comes to everyone. So back there, remember in James 4, verse 7, it says, Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee. And then in, in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 9, says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom... Resist steadfast the faith, knowing the same afflictions are accomplished in the brethren in the world. Now, how in the world do we resist the devil? See, that's what I wondered. When the Bible says resist the devil, well, again, what did Jesus do? He spoke the word. Each time Satan said something to Jesus, Jesus answered back by saying it is written and quoted a verse of Scripture. And see, that's what we want to do. That's why we, we want to know promises. Definitely one would know the name of Jesus. So when fear came or anxiety comes, the first thing we want to do is speak to it. You know, the panic comes with the fear. But in the midst of the situation, when they, when they woke up Jesus, we read, and said, carest thou not to be perished. Now, I know you got this storm raging, and their, the disciples are panicked. And so now we got this problem with the storm raging, and the disciples are all scared. Well, so what, what did Jesus do? The first thing he did is he took authority over it. He spoke to it. Now, Jesus didn't say, well, let's just pray. Thank God for prayer. You know, I guess maybe someone's out of the will of God. That's why we've got this storm. Never know what God will do. I guess God sent the storm to teach us something, like Christians talk. No, Jesus didn't do that. And just like when David showed up to bring his brothers his wine and cheese, like his dad told him to do, he shows up once and what's going on, and Goliath's come down twice, twice a day taunting these guys. And no one's done anything about him. And everybody's got this covenant, the same covenant David has. So what, G what David did is he approached the problem with his mouth open decreeing his covenant, what he was going to do to Goliath. And Goliath's talking to him. He's telling David what I'm going to do to you. And then David said, 
See, we always face our problem, first of all, with our mouth open, and we need to train ourselves this way and work on this every day and tweak it because there's always going to be situations rise up, panic, fear, worry, but the first thing we want to do is say something to them. And nothing else, use the name of Jesus. I mean, before you call 911 or anything else, the first thing we want to do is say something. Thank God for 911 or anything else we're going to use. But the first thing we say is the word. We take authority of it. We speak to it. We do what Jesus did. We use our covenant. Our, our covenant we have with God is voice activated. Like the psalmist said, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my force. How does the 91st Psalm get activated? Well, according to this 91st Psalm, it gets activated by saying it. Remember Psalm 107, verse 2 said, let the redeemed the Lord say so. So our authority comes out of our mouth. And when we speak God's word, it's the sword of the spirit coming out of our mouth. See, we're taught in Ephesians to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And we're taught in Ephesians there, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. That sword is the word raiment comes out of our mouth and speaking God's word, using our authority. And like Jesus taught us there in Mark chapter 11, we read in verse 23, he said, for verily I say in you, that he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also greater works than these shall he do because I might go to my father. That's from John chapter 14, verse 12. And then Mark 11, 23. Jesus said, for whosoever say in this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast to sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he, he shall have to say it. Now, one thing about speaking God's word, the more you say it, the more you're going to believe it. And remember, Jesus taught us there in John 14, verse 12, the works that I do, shall you do, all, shall you do also, and greater works. So how are we going to do that? In his name, we are the body of Christ, and we need to monitor what we say. Be careful what we say about our body and about our mind. I mean, people have heard confession taught some for years, and they still think of nothing to talk in negative. Oh, I know I shouldn't say that. Well, then <laughs> don't say it. Because it does make a difference. It does make a difference what we say. It does make a difference what we believe. It does make a difference what we think. Regardless of what people think, you know, if we're going to live in victory, then we got to watch what we say and monitor what we say. We're kings. And we're to go forth as a body of Christ, rule and reign, not over people, but over circumstances. We're the ones supposed to take charge of this earth and this world. And we're going to do that by using our authority, by decreeing and declaring what the word says. Just like Joshua did. He spoke to the sun, spoke to the moon, and God stands still in Joshua chapter 10. And he wasn't Jesus Christ. See, people think, well, Jesus Christ could do that because he was the son of God. Well, we are too, the children of God. And we do that because he gave us authority. He's the one, Jesus is the one that gave us his name. He's the one that said, these signs shall follow them believe. In my name, they'll cast out devils. How are we going to do that? By just thinking? By just looking at the, the problem? No, by opening our mouth and speaking to it. And this is why it's so important that when anything comes up, the first thing we do is say something to it. We refuse it, we rebuke it, we resist it, we don't accept it. We stand against it. We're gonna do that with our mouth. And again, like Hebrews says, there we're to hold fast our profession of faith. Our profession is our confession. What do you mean hold fast? Just keep saying the same thing by decreeing and declaring. What did Jesus do? Here, when the devil came to him, Satan said to him, If thou be the Son of God, turn these rocks into bread. And what did Jesus say? He could have said, No, wait a minute, Satan. Did you hear when I got water baptized, God spoke audibly to me and said, This is my beloved Son, who I'm well pleased? That did happen, and God did say that. But Jesus didn't appeal to that. He appealed to the written word. And see, what he's trying to teach the church is always use the word, the written word. See, some people get, you know, they go around and carry their prophecy like the priestly scroll. Well, thank God for the prophecy you got about yourself. But your power is in the Word of God, the written Word of God. Prophecies have to be judged in line with the Word. But the written Word is always God's will for our life. And God gave us His written Well, Like Peter said, we were there, that Mount Transfiguration, and we heard God say audibly, this, uh, and this is my beloved Son, hear you Him. But he went on to say, but we have, in 1 Peter, we have a more sure word of prophecy. What is he? Have? We have the word. Thank God for prophecies. But so often Christians follow prophecies and not follow the written word of God. Use the written word of God. And use, the, your, use your authority in Jesus' name. So what did Jesus do to deal with Satan? He didn't go by the audible voice. He didn't quote it. And yet it was God speaking, which was true. He went by what was written. 
he spoke what was written. He's teaching us to go by his written word, by speaking our authority, using our authority. We build our life on God's word. Like we read there before the other day that, you know, Jesus taught about two men at Matthew chapter 7. Beginning in verse 24 through verse 27. Both of them heard the word, but one of them built their life on God's word. And the other one didn't. They built their life on the sand. And the storms came to both of them. And one man that built his life on the word, he stood through the storm. And as that storm went by, he was still standing. The other man didn't build his life on God's word. He heard it, but he didn't build his life on his word. And he was taken out. Great was the fall of him. So what Jesus shows us here is the importance of building our life on God's word and meditate on God's word. See, taking the promises, they're called exceedingly great and precious promises, and taking those promises and applying them to God's word. See, what part of the word, like James said, but be you do the word of God, not a hear only. I always, when I got saved, I wanted to learn what I could use from God's word. I got born again in a Pentecostal church and preached a lot about the Antichrist coming and end time prophecies and how the world's going to hell right then. And this is a few years ago, you know, now. And so in my lifetime, there's, you know, I've heard there's been, you know, several different going to be uh, Antichrist. You know, it's about time when some denomination gets mad at somebody, they think they're going to be the Antichrist or is the Antichrist. But nevertheless, and notice the people weren't building their life on God's word. See, I wanted to find out the part of the Bible that was doable, that I could apply in my life, that I could use in my life so I could get results. To me, promises are like tools. If you learn how to use the tool, then you can apply it to the problem or the situation. And so I wanted to major and find out well, how to apply God's Word to my life, how to get the Bible to work for me, how to get this Bible, God's Word, to produce for me. Now, when it comes to defending myself, I learned from Jesus is that he spoke the word to situations. He spoke to the storm. He spoke to the wind, the waves, and it calmed down. And that's what we do with God's word. We take authority over it in Jesus' name. And we begin to decree and declare what God's word says. And some people, you know, study the word of God for just a bunch of knowledge like you'd have and, you know, a professor would teach. Well, okay, praise God. But applying it, applying God's word, using God's word and taking God's word and begin to apply. We don't study the word of God intellectually. Thank God for the, it renews our mind to God's word. We get it inside of our spirit. You can tell when people are talking as believers, if they got that promise or the, those scriptures in their spirit or just rattle around inside their head. See, so often the scriptures are just in their head. Like, you know, their science class is in their head. No, what we want to do is get God's word in the heart. We're going to do that by meditating on it. We're doing, we're going to do that by just constantly quoting it and saying this is what the word, like healing scriptures, the bias straps I'm healed, himself took our infirmities and bare my sicknesses, and constantly quoting those. So they go, oh, yeah, I know that verse. <laughs> wait, wait a minute, what now? We don't talk that way about God's word. See, God's word is always giving off fresh revelation knowledge of the word of God. And taking God's word and begin to apply it to our life. And using God's word in our life. And begin to apply the word of God and use it in our life so we can meditate, so we can get God's word in our, our life. So when something comes up, we can stand against it in Jesus' name. I was doing these services on a, on a weekly basis, and some lady had heard my radio program, and she came to one of the services I was doing. And uh, so that night I taught on Mark chapter 11, verse 23 and 24, and probably that woman with the issue of blood in Mark chapter 5, how she said, if I may touch his garment, he may hold. So she came up to me after the service over with, she goes, Brother Rich, this isn't the kind of Bible study I wanted. You know, I heard your radio program, I came tonight, you know, and uh, you taught, you know, Mark 11, 23, and Mark chapter 5. But I want a Bible study where I can go to and teach each verse. I said, oh. I said, sister, you, you know, you kind of want an intellectual Bible study. Well, well, the, well I, actually, I said to her, this is what you want, right? You want a Bible study teaching what each verse means, right? Yeah, yeah, you know, kind of like have a concordance or whatever, you know. I said, sister, for some reason, I said, sister, that's not what you need. Now, I don't care if the lady comes back or not. I wasn't trying to persuade her to come back. But I did say this to her. Sister, as I looked at her, I said, Sister, that's not what you need. You need to know how to run the devil off and how to stop him in Jesus' name. You're going to do that by applying God's word to your life. Well, she hung around there for a little bit, you know, and she left. And I thought later on, why did I say that lady? I said that, why did I say that lady? You know, what well, didn't come from my head, it came from my heart. But nevertheless, you know, she left. 
and didn't come back. And eight or nine weeks went by. And I'm still doing that, that Bible study on a weekly basis. And so, at the end of the Bible study that night, some people that said, I got a prayer request. They said they wanted to pray for this lady. Well, after service over with, these people came up to me and said, I don't know if you remember this lady or not, but she came to one Bible study. Now I remember her, you know, when they've been to talk about her. And she's in the hospital, and she wants you to come and see her. Well, I wasn't real comfortable about that, you know. And I said, well, if you guys go, I'll go with you. So I went, and when I did, you know, here's this lady. She started out, she's got a huge problem now physically. Uh, she's going to need a miracle. Or this thing's going to take her out. Well, so she began to say, Brother Rich, you know, I didn't come back. And she shared, you know, I, I did. I needed to know about healing, and I didn't really want to learn it. Or about using my, applying God's word throughout my life. Well, I prayed with her, agreed with her, and thank God she lived through it. But the point is, you know, I give the short version of that story. But the point is here, you want to build your life on God's word. And you want to, you're going to do that by learning promises and apply them to your life and quoting those promises every day. Because you got a devil who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said the thief cometh. Now, Satan's been defeated, but you enforce that defeat. We're like an occupying army, the body of Christ. What we're doing is enforcing Satan's defeat by using our authority in Jesus' name and taking authority. Now, you have David's brothers. They didn't use their authority. And you have King Saul. He didn't use his authority. They had the same covenant that David did. But David activated his covenant by speaking to the problem. David ran towards his problem with his mouth open by decreeing and declaring his covenant. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? He used to fight the armies of God. Look how he's talking. The King Saul's not talking that way. Definitely David's brothers aren't talking that way. They're, they're upset at David. They said, we know your pride and notice your heart. When he was using his authority, that's what they accused him of. And see, Christians will do the same thing to you when you begin to use your authority. Well, love the Christians, but always consider the source. People talk that way. They're not living in victory. I don't know about you. When I got saved, I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. And if there was divine healing, I wanted it. If there was divine prosperity, I wanted it. If there was divine protection, I wanted it. And sure enough, it's in the Bible. Because you believe God's word doesn't mean you're going to have challenges. You will have challenges. But you're going to face those challenges, problems, whatever you want to call them, you're going to face them with your mouth open by decreeing and declaring what the Word says and taking healing scriptures like we've read many times, Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, Matthew 8, 17, 1 Peter 2, 24, and just memorizing them and read them and quote them constantly yourself. So when anything tries to come upon you, at least a little flicker of pain, no, I resist this in Jesus' name and stand against it. Not just keep your mouth shut or just, I wonder what that is. Well, maybe, I, you know, maybe I've been working too hard. Well, maybe you have been working too hard, but you want to talk that way. If you need rest, get the rest. But you're engaged in your mouth. And definitely you don't want to use your mouth against your body. I mean, there's enough problems come to life without using your mouth against yourself. No, we want to use our mouth for us to stand against. The wall of defense that we have is our mouth, the words coming out of our mouth. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Again, what did Jesus do? He spoke the Word. He said it's written and quoted, and quoted a scripture. I mean, when I first heard that, I didn't know anybody that even did that. But Jesus did. Think about this. When something came up, he spoke to it. He didn't say, well, wait a minute. Didn't you hear when I got water baptized, God said I'm his beloved son who is, who is well pleased? And that was true. He did say that. God did. But Jesus said what was written. And this is what the believer needs to get a hold of is the sword of the spirit. The only line of fence we have against attacks from the enemy is God's word. Use the name of Jesus. Thank God for prayer. But the word is the authority of the believer. The word is the sword of the spirit. The word is what doesn't return void. It's the word that God confirms with signs following. And what we just, our attitude should be and belief should be, according to the word of God, be it unto me. He says himself took my infirmities and bare my sickness. That settles it. He says I have the mind of Christ. That should settle it. He says he'll take care of me. He'll supply all my needs. Then financially, that's how we need to rest in that. Doesn't mean there's not going to be challenges. Doesn't mean there's not going to be problems because Satan's always going to kind of contest you. He's always going to try to see if you'll cope with something, put up with something, or tolerate something. But no, we don't. We always come against. Just as soon as Jesus, they woke him up, he immediately said something to the problem. He didn't say, well, I wonder what God, why God sent this. Maybe we're out of God's will. Maybe God's trying to teach us something. Like Christians talk. Christians talk victim mentality so often because they don't speak their authority. And they heard something taught about it, and they didn't like it. Many Christians don't want to take responsibilities for, responsibility for their life. 
they want to blame God for their condition. They want to say, oh, this is God's will. He's put this on me, tried to teach me something. God just got me in this test of trial right now, and it's his will be done. No, it's the Satan. It's Satan's doing it. It's Satan when it comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And what we need to do is resist him. We're going to do that with our mouth open by speaking God's word in Jesus' name and taking authority of the situation. Instead of wondering why this happened, think, well, you know, it is what it is. You never know what God will do. Everything works out for my good. I just believe it's going to work out for my good. No, it won't. It's Satan to kill you. Because that's what he comes to do. Look what he did to Job. I mean, Job got, like, got his brains beat out until he found out who this is coming from. And thank God he got everything restored to him. But you see, and plus, you know, Job didn't even have the, didn't even have the Bible like we have. Or covenant, or the name of Jesus. And that's what we need to use, our covenant. In the name of Jesus, the word that God gave us. Again, everybody's going to face challenges in life. But using the word of God, taking authority over it. And every day you get to get a fight for your life. In the name of Jesus, stand against any attacks against your finances, against your health, your sound mind, your family, your loved ones, your nation. You know, needs us to speak God's word to him. Take authority. So Satan, I bind you in Jesus' name. You can't have my nation. I stand against you in the name of Jesus. And I take authority in the name of Jesus. Father God, I thank you in Jesus' name. Begin to praise God and thank God that we're healed, we're delivered, protected, we're prosperous, we're blessed. And every day, using our mouth. It just takes labor on our part to be able to use our authority in Jesus' name. But we have to train ourselves to do it. Our mouth doesn't mind talking. It doesn't, our mouth doesn't mind eating. But we have to train it to speak God's word. And use our authority in the name of Jesus. And we just realize if we're going to walk in victory, then we need to maintain that confession of faith. Constantly, consistently speaking God's word and praising God that we are what his word says we are. We have what his word says we have. And by doing so, we'll begin to see the manifestation of God's power in our life. Father God, I pray for each of their person today is watching. I thank you, Lord. I agree with them. They're healed, they're delivered, they're redeemed because your word says so. And Father God, we thank for all of our new covenant benefits and blessings we have. In Jesus' name, amen. Have you received Jesus Christ, your Lord? Maybe you're not sure. Or maybe you know you've never done it. God wants you to receive his son, Jesus Christ. You're going to do that by confessing Jesus Christ as Lord. Now, the Bible says here in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, verse 10, verse 13, I want to read these scriptures. And then if you haven't received Jesus, let's do this today. Let's receive Jesus Christ as Lord today. So now you got a guarantee when you do that, you'll never go to hell. Now, the Bible says here in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, verse 10, verse 13, that if thou shalt confess thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in the heart God has raised the dead, thou shalt be saved. For at the heart man believe the righteous, and with the mouth confession means salvation. Now, verse 13, for who scope only the Lord shall be saved. Pray this prayer with me today to receive Jesus Christ as Lord. And if you've already received the Lord, then pray the people pray the prayer with me, okay? Say this with me. God, I come to you today to receive Jesus Christ, my Lord. I believe in my heart, and I confess my mouth that Jesus is the Lord. I believe Jesus crucified, took my sins on the cross, took my judgment to sin, died, was buried, and God, you're raised and dead. Jesus, I received you today as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me. And thank you, your blood has cleansed me from all sins. And thank you, Jesus, that now that you're my Lord, when I die, I'll never go to hell. And I thank you, Lord, for that. In Jesus' name, amen. You prayed that prayer? Good for you. I'd like to hear from you. You can email me, if you would, at jesserichministries.com. Also, I want to encourage you, if you prayed that prayer today, I want you to go buy a Bible, physical Bible, and start reading the Gospel of John. Find a church to tend to that preaches Jesus the only way to heaven. And tell that pastor you prayed a prayer to receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. That pastor in church help you grow and help spiritually. Help them out. Start attending. Be, be in the tithe and give. Be a blessing. That ministry is feeding you on God's word. Stay faithful to it. Also, we have our phone conference, conference tonight, church on the phone. That's at 7 o'clock. That phone number and access code should be right here on our Facebook page. Call in. It's 7 o'clock. And then mute your phone. You can fellowship the saints. Have a good time. Plus, we have communion. It's one way you can be refreshed in God's Word. Really enjoyed being today. I want to encourage you. Keep watching. Keep learning about who you are in Christ Jesus. Till next time, it's Brother Rich Mind. We love you. And we're praying for you. Remember, Jesus is always more than enough.